Now then YouTube, I am the Toffman and welcome to the first in a series of Universal Electricity Tutorials. Now for anybody who's followed my Thorncraft tutorials will know kind of like the style of things of which I like to do. Um, I like to be quite thorough in everything that I do. So when I'm doing my tutorials I will be telling you all the bits and bobs that you're going to need bit like a shopping list um, and you know basically anything that I, any information that I can give you about the said item machine whatever it is um, now along the way if I do miss out something or something's changed along the way then by all means put it into the, into the uh, comments section below and I will acknowledge that you know m maybe put a comment below it as well so that it gets to the top so that people can see if something does change along the way then the best thing to do is have a look in the comments guys and see what other people are saying that's really the best way uh, for for me to do it unless you know obviously further down the line if I redo a tutorial if something's massively changed so without further ado this is the universal electricity tutorial now firstly I've got to actually say to you guys that I'm doing this universal electricity tutorial through SolitudeCraft. Now SolitudeCraft very recently has the ability to create packs within my SolitudeCraft and now I can actually do this and this is the universal electricity pack. It does however include industrial craft in it as well. The only way that I can do that, I'm afraid, because of the config files and all the different problems we had with the config files, basically I can only output one config file uh, for the whole of SolidCraft. So when it comes down to doing these like little packs, it's still using the same config file. And because copper and tin is widely used in a lot of different mods, that is why um, I've got industrial craft in there because that is the mod which uh, generates the copper and tin. Otherwise, I'll end up with copper and tin everywhere, and there's about seven different bloody kinds. So I've had to do the industrial craft in there, but it's really it's only needed for the R's. And if anybody who's wat watching this would like to do totally a universal electricity kind of thing, you can do that through um, SolidCraft. There's a little link on the install. You press install and it comes up with like a mod selection screen there's a little drop down box that you can click and at the moment the pack is called amps it's a bit of a piss take really on vaults but uh, it's a temporary name until I think of something better or until somebody gives me a good idea but anyway guys you select that and that will give you all the mods that's going to be covered in uh, these tutorials firstly on to the ores that are actually used within universal electricity and it's little add-ons. Well, it's called basic components, really, and uh, it uses. Um, has it just gone dark, or is it me? I could swear I. Have... Hang on a second, guys. Enable dawn noon. Well, I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, um, let's turn it daytime. These are the R's that you're going to be using within Universal Electricity. We've got copper. We have tin. We have uranium. We have platinum ore, we have sulfur, and we have silver right at the back there. Now, silver, uh, sulfur sorry, is generated through ICBM in the config file. Electric expansion is the one that adds silver. Mechanism is the one that adds this platinum. And um, atomic science does add uranium, but because it's there with industrial craft, it overwrites that and it's the industrial craft uranium that's, uh, that's, that can be crafted. Uh, that can be mined. Sorry. So what you would, what the the first thing that you would do in a universal electricity uh, let's play or playthrough, whatever you're going to be doing, um, is you will need to go mining. There's really no more, nothing else more important right at the start than get yourself a, ha a house set up, get yourself you know the normal chests, furnaces, all that kind of good stuff that you would normally do, and just go out and have a massive, massive mining session. Get yourself copper, get yourself tin, get yourself definitely platinum. Um, silver may be of some use to you, but not for just for a while. Uh, platinum is definitely worth your while. You're going to need platinum for the first machine that you're ever going to make, make within the basic um, this amps pack of mine. So, um, and redstone guys. Make sure you've got plenty of redstone, iron, it goes without saying. Once you've got all these things, you can move on to crafting your first machine. Now it's actually a machine that you're going to be crafting first before you actually craft any kind of generator or furnace or anything like that. It is a machine that you want first. 
you can also craft what are called Paxels. Now these Paxels uh, basically act like three different tools. A pickaxe, an axe and a shovel all in one basically. Uh, the recipe is pretty simple. A couple of sticks with one of each type of tool along the top. So you'll probably be starting off with something like a stone paxel, moving on to iron paxels, just makes mining a little bit easier. It can also be worth noting guys that you will need quite a considerable amount of leather, so getting yourself a cow farm earlier on could be beneficial. The first machine that you'll want to craft is called the Metallurgic Infuser. This will allow you to create steel. Now, if you have me uh, the mechanism, which is you know enabled by default in this pack, you're going to have to physically take that out. Um, but mechanism actually overwrites the bronze recipe and the, uh, the steel recipe. So you can't get bronze and steel without having a metallurgic infuser. And because the generators and the furnaces all require quite a bit of steel actually to, uh, to craft straight off the bat, you're going to need the metallurgic infuser first to get the steel. Now the metallurgic infuser, if you're wondering what these are guys, these are called Exact Crafter. It is enabled in the pack, in the Amps pack as default. And uh, these, this basically works, uh, I'm just going to go into a little bit of detail about the Exact Crafter. It basically works like a multiple project table. Um, you can see certain recipes and just automatically craft them. Basically, it's a really, really useful tool to have. But I'm not going to go into a full detail on how to actually use the Exact Crafter, that's just how it works. Because uh, I know I'm probably going to get some comments about that. So we want the metallurgic infuser, which is this thing up here. And you can see the recipe in the center there. It is four iron, two furnaces, two of this. The, they're called basic, contra uh, basic circuits. You can use the alternative recipe, which is the control circuits here. I'll show you what I mean. Oops, if I can actually spell right. There's the metallurgic infuser, guys, and you can see it's cycling between the control circuit and the basic circuit. The control circuits are the one that you want because the basic circuit needs the bronze plate or steel plate to get it, and obviously you can't do that just yet. So these control circuits are the best way to go. And that's why I said to get yourself platinum because you're not going to be able to do anything in Universal Electricity or this AMPS pack without getting platinum first. If you don't have the platinum, you can't make the metallurgic infuser. So this is a little shopping list that I've got for the metallurgic infuser. You need seven iron. 8 platinum ingots, 12 redstone, and 16 cobble. Pretty easy recipe. You know, uh, platinum, I don't really know how rare it is. I don't think it's that kind of rare. I think it's just less rare than, than iron. I could be wrong by saying that. I think it's just less rare than iron, but I, I, like I said, I could be wrong. So, looking into the metallurgic infuser, we need two furnaces. So let's get two furnaces, and that'll take them. We also need two of the control circuits. But we also need to get the control circuits, we need two of these enriched alloys. There's the recipe if you just so wish to uh, see it. Couple enriched alloys, couple of controller circuits. And we need one more enriched alloy for the actual metallurgic infuser. Oh, and it appears that I've got too many iron. That can't be right. No, it's not right, so because you need iron for the metallurgic infuser. And uh, boosh, there you go. This is the metallurgic infuser. And this is the metallurgic infuser, guys. Got it on the floor here. Um, and some basic things to tell you guys. This is an upgrade slot. Don't worry about that just yet, because you probably don't have any resources to be able to craft these. Um, let's have a look, actually. We're not going to go into upgrades just now, but you can see there's a whole load of upgrades up the top there. We'll go into them a bit later on. This is the first input slot. This is the secondary input slot. This is the output slot. And this is the power slot, and this is the power bar. And they, this bar on here is this first input slot. Basically, when you put something into here, it will start filling this bar up. Depends how much you put in. Um, that is the normal input slot for, so say, items. And this is the power, say, for a battery or something like that. And that is for, you know, power being actually plugged into it through a generator or so on and so forth. It'll, it'll power it up that way. The way that you actually power up this metallurgic infuser right at the start, you're going to have to get yourself redstone. There is no other way about it. You probably don't have the um, resources, uh, certainly at the minute, to craft the generator because you need steel for that. So you're going to have to put redstone in this slot here. And you can see the bar on the right-hand side there is filled right up there. Uh, you will also need in here something else. You'll need what's called compressed carbon. Compressed carbon can be got by smelting coal itself and you'll get the compressed carbon. Now you're going to need a few of these.
it seems 10 fills the bar on the left hand side there um, and in this secondary input slot to make steel you're going to want to get something that's called enriched iron now enriched iron can be got through this means two enriched alloys and one iron ingot. Now there are cheaper recipes with copper dust and uh, tin dust here but we don't have the ability to actually make any kind of dusts just yet so you're gonna have to do it with the enriched alloys and the iron ingot for the minute. So we need a couple of these enriched uh, ingots uh, enriched alloys sorry along with an iron ingot and you get the six enriched irons. Not bad. So let's pop over here make it dirt really quick and then put the enriched iron into the left hand slot there of the metallurgic infuse. You can see it's uh, fair rattling through this redstone and this will generally this will uh, generally create steel dust. There you go. That is how you get steel dust. And I believe you can just smelt this. There you go, confirming you can actually just smelt the steel dust and you will get the steel ingots back. So there you go. That is the metallurgic infuser. That's how you create steel. But we're going to need to do something a little bit different. Later on, what I'm going to be showing you is how to create bronze. Now, we can't actually do that until we get tin dust. So we're a little bit stuck for the moment with getting bronze. However, we can craft steel, which means we can finally start on getting some power into our machine that isn't redstone. Now you have a way of creating steel, you can start with universal electricity proper and the, the basics to start with is called a coal generator. The coal generator is crafted as follows, if I hover over this you can see it's going to require seven steel, a furnace and one of these motors. Now for your ease of use, I've got down here the, uh, the amount of uh, things that you're going to need. You're going to need eight cobblestone, six leather, three copper. 11 steel and one iron ingot. So, looking at this coal generator here, I'm going to require a few things. Let's take that out and put that back in. Alright, so we're going to need a furnace. Lovely. Why did that not take my copper and my cobble? Why is that not taking my cobble at all? Oh, because I'm in creative. Duh. So there you go. I thought, nah, have I gone wrong there somewhere? But no. There is your furnace, that's one of the uh, things that you're going to have to craft with the uh, coal generator there. You also need, like I said, these insulated copper wires. You're going to need just six of them to create this motor. Now the motor requires four steel, and I think you can just about see the recipe there without the tooltip. There is four steel, four of them copper wires, and four, uh, one of the iron in the middle. Now, it says we can automatically craft them because we still have these insulated copper wires down here. So that's taken the copper wires straight away, so I don't really need that there. And some spare copper wires. Motor, furnace, and seven steel ingots mean we can get ourselves the coal generator. This, as you can see, is the coal generator. Nice. See, it's got a slot on the back, and I'll get into that in just a second. But this coal generator, basically you put coal in here and it will generate power. Now of course the power is going absolutely nowhere, so it's probably not best to put coal in there just yet. But uh, I want to get into a tool that you will need uh, going to uh, the machines with universal electricity. That tool is called a wrench. Yes, it pretty much functions like every other wrench does. Uh, it allows you to turn machines around and spin them. So one diamond and three steel will get you the universal electricity wrench. Now this wrench pretty expensive I've got to say um, but it does exactly what it's meant to. Go to this machine you can right click it to orientate it any which way that you would like. This black slot on the back here by the way is the output so if you want to be outputting to a different direction use your wrench. You can create power but where exactly can it go? Well, it can go straight into your metallurgic infuser right now if you wanted to uh, hook it up with some cables, as is, 
you can quite clearly do that. However, we probably want to move on to how to actually store the energy we're creating. And that is where we come into the battery box. Now the battery box is a uh, six steel, as you can see there, with three of these batteries. Now these batteries are crafted with five tin, one redstone, and one coal. So at the bottom here you can see the uh, resources needed to craft the battery box. We need six steel, three coal, three redstone, and 15 tin. If you haven't guessed by now, um, universal electricity does require quite a lot of coal. So let's get three of these batteries. Lovely. Hmm. Alright guys, when you actually craft these batteries, um, they, they look empty, as you can see there. But actually, if you just get them out and put them into your inventory, you'll get this bar along the bottom that will fill it up. And then you can use that for the uh, actual recipe there. So now we can actually teach that to there. And uh, there we go. Oh, got an invalid valid chip there. Don't know what that is. But uh, anyway, um, that's how you actually craft these batteries. You will craft one without a bar on the bottom. I'm going to have to actually say something to, uh, unless it's been fixed, because it was an update not so long back. So, just put it into your inventory, and then put it back in there. Same goes for like crafting tables and stuff like that. And then you will be able to create the battery box. Lovely. Now, an important thing to actually note with some of the universal electricity machines is inputs and outputs. Now, inputs are usually the red side as you can see there, and output is usually this black side. So, just a little thing for you there. Okay guys, you're going to need some more copper wire as well. I believe the recipe was in there. Yep, and I just so happen to have some still there. Now the copper wire simply goes from the output slot to the input slot. Hard, I know. So let's get some coal. And put it in there. Now you will notice that there is the hull heat to actually go through first. It's not going to start creating power until that hull heat gets to 100%. And then it will start creating the power. And there we are. We are generating the watts at a voltage of 120. That's like uh, low power in industrial craft, like 32 EU per tick, I think. So there you go. Battery box is filling up with power quite nicely. And you can now take the power to the machine and... Uh, it doesn't require redstone to run anymore. Let me just show you that by taking up the metallurgy confuser and putting it back down again. There you are. It's getting nicely powered by all this. It's also worth noting with the battery box that uh, you can input the power into a battery. So let's get a battery right now. Empty one and put it in there. You can input the power straight into a battery or you can take the power out of a battery. There you go. I don't know whether or not redstone would work in this. No. Redstone doesn't work in the battery box like it would do the metallurgy confuser. Okay guys, moving on to the next step of my universal electricity tutorial. Basically, we've got a way of creating power we have a way of storing power and we now have a way of creating steel. What's the next step and the next logical step to go to? Well, doubling our ore, I suppose. And that requires the enrichment chamber. The enrichment chamber is crafted as follows. You can see it's going to need four of the enriched alloys, two redstone, two of the control circuits, and one steel block. Now it's also well worth noting that you don't have to use a control circuit at this stage. You can use the basic circuits, which are these things. Slightly cheaper, it all really depends on how much platinum you have kicking around and which one you actually want to make. The basic circuits can be done with a steel plate. Now you can craft it with four steel ingots, because previously before we couldn't use these because of course we didn't have the metallurgy confuser. So it depends which one you want to use. You can use this one or that one. doesn't really matter for the enrichment chamber. But we are going to require four of these. Now, this is, this is a little shopping list that I've got down here for this recipe that I'm using. Nine steel, 26 redstone, six iron, and eight platinum ingots. So firstly, let's get that steel block on the go. Thank you. There's the steel block. Next, we need four 
of them enriched alloys. And we need two of the circuits, so of course we're going to need another couple of control circuits, uh, control circuits as well. Another couple. And we're going to need two of them, which leaves us with four enriched alloys, two circuits, two redstone, and a steel block, which is exactly what we need to create the enrichment chamber. All right, guys. The enrichment chamber, when down, looks like this. Um, you can also plug it up to the back with uh, wire from your battery box, as you can see here. Uh, it also accepts redstone in the bottom there, much like what all the mechanism machines tend to do. Upgrade slot in the top left hand side. The input slot there, and this is the progress bar, and the output slot is here, along with the power bar on the right hand side, so you can see how well it is powered. So the enrichment chamber, what does it do? Well, let's get ourselves, say we've got some platinum kicking around. We can put ours in here. It will go along with the, with the progress bar there, and it will spit out two platinum dust for every R we put in, effectively doubling the amount of what we're going to be getting back. And there's also its little sound effect as well, there's a couple of particle effects. Now you can see on the recipes here, you can do it with obsidian, copper, uh, dirty platinum dust to make platinum dust, dirty gold dust to get gold dust, I'm not sure what the dirty bit is all about, tin, silver, tin, dust, dirty silver and dirty tin. Redstone, to get double the amount of redstone you would normally get if you say you got through silk touch. Dirty iron, lapis, redstone, don't quite get that, whatever. Uh, red, diamond, to get double the amount of diamonds as well. Platinum, as I've just shown. Dirty copper, coal, basically just you know anything that you're mining up through this pack will go through here. Uh, because it's all based around universal electricity. So there you are guys, a way of doubling your ores. Now with the enrichment chamber, you can now make tin dust. And this is a good thing, because now you can create bronze a hell of a lot easier. So let's go over here, tin dust in the side, and it fills up the bar, and copper into there will allow you to, create, to get bronze. Now bronze is obviously cheaper than creating steel. There we are. Just gives you another way of getting these, uh, where are they? Bronze plates? My copper eye. These bronze plates for the other recipes that I've shown you. Now remember guys, also before you go smelting up your dusts, um, you can actually create enriched iron with copper dusts rather than using these enriched alloys. I find them a little bit more expensive so once you get the ability to create dusts it's much better using either copper dust or the tin dust I'd go for copper it's a little bit more um, prominent in the world than tin is tins are a little bit rarer so you use copper with an iron and you will get four of the enriched irons rather than the six but still a lot cheaper okay guys just to recap we have a way of creating power we have a way of storing power we have a way of making steel and bronze, as well as creating dusts from our ores. Well, the next logical step is to have something to automatically smelt these items up. So, we're going to move on to what's called the electric furnace. Now, within the amps pack, and this tutorial also goes for the vaults as well through Technic, um, this is slightly more advanced than the one in, in uh, vaults because it's you know more up to date. So, um, the electric furnace will probably get far surpassed quite soon, but it's still a good way of getting your dust smelted up into ingots um, cheaper than what it would be normally, and it's a lot faster as well. It would be a bit faster as well. So, we're going to want the electric furnace, which is this thing up here. Now, you're going to need seven steel, one basic circuit, and one of these motors. Now there is no other one, you can't use control circuits for these, you've got to use the uh, basic circuits and of course you've got the motor up there as well. So we're going to need to create two sets of this insulated copper wire because there is going to be four required in there and four required in there because this only creates six. We're going to need some of them. So if you didn't see down there guys, that was the uh, shopping list. It was um, six copper, twelve leather, uh, eleven steel, one iron ingot, and four redstone to get one of these things. There's the motor, and there's the basic circuit. Now you're also going to require, oh, and uh, I just so happen to have 
missed something out there. Now you can either use bronze or steel. We're going to use bronze because it's slightly cheaper than making steel. But yes, you are going to need four bronze or four steel along with this recipe. I do apologise for that. You're going to need one of these plates. There you go. And that gets you the basic circuit. Lovely. And then we should be able to craft the electric furnace with all the rest of the items that we've got. You will get some spare uh, wires, but you probably already have some kicking around anyway, so you might not have even needed to create the uh, two lots. Now I've also got a copper wire at the back there. We're just going to plug that into there. And as you can see, red signifies input. And we can right click on this, and you can see exactly what's going on. Now, we've got the battery slot in the bottom. If you so wish to run this off a battery, you can do. Uh, and uh, of course it's already plugged into the back so uh, it requires 10 kilowatts and it's a voltage of 120 so if you're creating more than 120 through any kind of generators in the future please be aware that this has a voltage of 120 and it will blow up if you supply it with more pretty simple let's get some dusts that we've already created so you've got some gold you put that into there and it smelts up. So you can see it's faster than a normal furnace and runs off power as well. There you go. The electric furnace. And that pretty much covers it for the first episode of my Universal Electricity tutorial. In the next episode we're going to go a little bit further, but I'll, I'll go through that in the next episode. We've found out how to create power. we found out how to p basically double our output and create copper uh, create bronze and steel as well as storing some of our energy. That's the basics that you're going to need going forwards with universal electricity. I hope this has been informative and I should hope to see you for part two. Until then, stay safe.